speaking of rocking it, it's time for you to ask Pat whatever questions you'd like. Right, before we're we get, get into questions, oh, yes, okay. I want to point out, what? a few days ago, we had a question from somebody that said, would you please tell me I'm wearing a bikini and is it a sin? And I tried to give a scriptural answer. And my lovely co-host, who's been working out like crazy and dieting, uh, decided that she would rather wear one of those skimpy things. At That's the beach. not true, Pat. And so she told him about it. And uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm pleased to re report that the Wall Street Journal is listening to me. And if you look at the headline, what does it say? The summer of modesty. <laughs> okay, okay, I want you to see something. You see that second one right there? That, okay, I think it's an interpretation of bikini and not bikini. Believe it or not, I wore something like well, that. that's not a bikini. Look, that's a my... two-piece bathing suit. Exactly, but I guess that's what I was trying to communicate, but it came out bikini's wrong. Bikini's a little teeny deal. Yeah, no woman foggy. over 12 needs to wear that thing. Well, well, you see? No, and I agree with that. It's but not even for modesty. People. I know, I did. I take All it right. back. No woman Look, over 12 needs to wear that. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wall Street Journal... They're I listening like to me. Uh, it's modesty. Women shall be adorned modesty. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you, Wall Street <laughs> Journal. <laughs> All right, Christy, you're exonerated. Oh, All right, thank you. Okay. Right, well. <laughs> thank you for that, Pat. Well, yeah, Donna yeah. says, I'm having to stay with my ex-husband's family because I lost my job and apartment. I have nowhere else to go. It can be very stressful here because of the daily fussing and drama. There are no Christians living in this house, and I pray daily for God to deliver me. Pat, any pointers? The pointer I give you, I'm sorry you're in that situation. They have to live with your ex-husband's family. You must have had a good relationship with them. But let me tell you this. They're taking you in. You've got a place to stay in a difficult time. I recommend that you submerge your anger and, and frustration, that you pray silently to the Lord, that you maintain a cheery atmosphere, an attitude and that you praise God and in the midst of everything you praise the Lord and the surest way out of the wilderness is overcoming praise. You just thank God that he, you've got a place to stay, you've got a dry uh, roof over your head, you've got food on the table and something will be opening up for you. But just start praising the Lord. That's how you do it. But do not get angry with the people around you and, and you know, don't be a source of the problem. That's the answer. Love All right. it. Love it. All right, Kim asked, why did Jesus cry out on the cross? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Didn't Jesus know what was going on? Well, he did, but there was a point of time where the Bible says the sins of mankind were heaped on him. I mean, everything that was ever done, all the nasty things that were done by Adolf Hitler and Mao Zedong and Joseph Stalin and, and Genghis Khan and all the tyrants of the world and all the people of the meanness and the corruption of this world, it's all heaped on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, it's as if the Father had hid his face from him because he had to strike sin and the Son became the, the representative of all the human race. And at that moment, it was so horrible. Jesus said, why have you forsaken mm -hmm. me? Yes, of course, he knew that things were going to come out. But he, he, <clears throat> he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, let this cup pass from me if it be possible. Not the physical pain, but all of this anguish. And he knew mm -hmm. that, that there was going to come a time when he would feel separated from the Father. And that's what happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Bill says, I heard it's possible that the banks will collapse in six months. Ooh, what are you thinking? What should I do about the cash in my bank account? That's a great well, question. I, you know, the banks aren't going to collapse in six months. No what? The American banking system is backed up by the FDIC, and uh, the regulations are pretty string, stringent. Now, what I was, have said, and you've heard, I don't know what you heard from somebody else, but I think that the euro, the euro zone will be falling apart in six months. That's my mm. prognostication. I may be wrong, but it's an unnatural union of disparate uh, countries and uh, forced in, not into a political union, but into an economic union that isn't working. So the chances are Greece is going to go, and then Spain will go, and then Portugal will go, and so forth. And so the euro bloc may fall apart. We don't know what's going to happen, but the United States banks are okay. I wouldn't worry about that. And, and but you could spread your accounts out. They're insured up to a certain amount of money, a couple hundred thousand dollars. And so if you've got millions, uh, you don't want to put it all in one bank. All right. Good deal. Remember, if you ever want to ask Pat a question, all you have to do is log on to CVN.com.